But today is, in fact, <laughs> celebrating one of the days that will go down in the annals of British history. Yeah, yeah. There are many years in British history that we can call to mind, be it 1066 or 1215, or how many do you want? <laughs> Thir 1346. Um, 1485, 1509, 1588, 1649. These are great and famous years. But it is very, very rare. It is very rare that specific days are commemorated as I think the 23rd of June 2016 will be commemorated. It is on a par with St Crispin's Day 1415 and with the 18th of June uh, 1815. Great days in our nation's history. And we are here debating this because our constitution has been put back on a proper footing. It has been put back on a proper footing by the wisdom of the British people, yeah. but also, as it happens, by the Supreme Court. And I'm particularly pleased by page 29 of the judgment that says, for these reasons, we disagree with Lloyd LJ's conclusions in Rees Mogg, insofar as he held that ministers could exercise prerogative powers to withdraw from the EU treaties. So the judges, though it's taken a year or two, <coughs> finally agreed that in 1993 my father was right. Yeah. So there is a virtue yeah. in this judicial process, slow and long-winded though it may be. But actually it is so important constitutionally because Dice's constitution has been restored. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Queen in Parliament is the sovereign body of our nation. And that is so important because, as Dicey said, Dicey argued, it is Parliament that is the defender of the liberties of the people, of our ancient constitution and of our freedom. We miss you. No, we don't. Oh, we he do. was a very unsuccessful American president, and his foreign policy was a catastrophe. Absolute catastrophe. Oh, I think he was really successful and didn't really he, brilliant and gave me hope for a better world. Didn't even manage to close Guantanamo Bay, which he promised to do. Made a complete pig's ear of Syria and uh, of the whole uh, Arab Spring. I, I, I'm not saying we did it brilliantly, but America lost global leadership in the Middle East and has allowed Putin to take over in, in terms of policy all, formation I think we, we in Syria. All be to the British people have voted to leave, the House of Commons has voted to leave, Professor Grayling wants us to stay, I'm with the majority. Um, <laughs> could, sorry, do, may, may I, because the, the, this phrase, the British people, I, I do think it's the most terrific catchphrase. We're, we're really talking about about a quarter of the population when you sum up who that 37% of the restricted franchise was. Well, I think it's such nonsense, the figure gets lower and lower for really um, Professor Grayling's convenience, that no. the British people voted in a fair election and a majority voted to leave. A minority I think to call of them, them the did. British people is extremely fair. A minority of them did, and I have to say with very great respect that to see uh, an old Etonian stockbroker on the far right of the Tory party representing himself as a tribune of the people, representing the interests of car workers in Sunderland, is mildly implausible. Are you being a tonist? What I want to say I'm is that this, sure this referendum that either was the for... professor of the New College of the Humanities or I should throw stones at each other about our backgrounds. Well, Mr... Uh, Particularly. Let, let me say this. That, 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 uh, it's not the people that uh, Mr. East Mogg is representing. It's his people. Because the kind of Britain that he wants, a low-tax Britain, a Britain where there isn't enough money for the NHS and for state education and for welfare and for well, more environmental money for the NHS protection. If we don't give it to the EU. No, no, um, well, you want uh, to privatise it. I mean, you don't use I, it. I so you want to privatise it. Privatise the NHS. I've okay. never argued for the privatisation of the NHS. You're putting words into my mouth. No, no. What does this word mean? The actual habit of estimating as worthless estimating something is worthless yes and what was the word just can, remind me can you give me the latin derivation oh uh, well uh, no not offhand can't you why not do you use you, words and you can't give the proper derivation derivation well i don't always have to give the etymology of word. every word i use but i can pronounce it i mean we it comes everyone knows it comes from flocci meaning a whisper a piece of wool knockai meaning a trifle uh, and uh, pili means, pili pili means uh, nothing yeah, yeah. Uh, and the pili meaning a uh, hair or something in significance i mean it could have been uh, flossio non facio. What does that mean? I couldn't give a straw. Mm, that's the literal interpretation. I know, yes.
If but you were being rude, you might say I couldn't give a damn. Of indifference. But I wouldn't be Why so didn't rude you use on... the smaller one rather than the longer one? I didn't think of it, actually. Mm. Um, Floxy Noggy Nihilopilification came to mind, as it does from time to time. Does it often come to your mind? It's one of those words I've known since I was a schoolboy. When, when, when it comes to your mind, is there room for anything else in your mind? Lots, and particularly pointing out that what we are wanting to indulge in the floxy knock in the of, ah, which is there. the European Court of Justice, mm. which is the key point. That the Not the judges, European Court in Strasbourg? No. The one in Luxembourg? The ECJ ruled to their own benefit that the pay rises of European officials had to go through, and that included their own pay. And this is against one of the most important principles of justice, that you should not be a judge in your own cause. And thankfully, using this odd word has got some attention to that tremendously important point of corruption in the law courts of Europe. And it's, it's okay, very important that point, to get that point You've made it in the cross. Commons, you've made it again. Huh? The big issue, I want to uh, if, know if it was resolved, did the hands out people have to ask you to spell it? No, hands are fantastic, as, as Quentin Letts was saying. I find they improve my speeches. They take out the arms and R's, mm. and they make what one was saying better sense and flow more elegantly. Now, you spoke at this Tory dinner last night, didn't you? I did, yes. Where, where was it? It was um, just the other side of Lambeth Bridge. That's right. And uh, wh whereabouts on Lambeth Bridge? Just the other side of Lambeth just Bridge. The other There's side. a Plaza Hotel. Plaza Hotel, right. Um, you spoke as a new MP. I did, yes. What was your message? My message was that the Conservatives are wonderful and the Liberals aren't quite as good. So it was quite controversial with the audience. Really then. controversial. It was a hard-hitting, tough message. Are you expecting promotion immediately afterwards? Uh, no, I don't think that will follow. Why aren't you in the government? Um, because I'm backbencher, which I love being, representing uh, yeah. the county of Somerset. Who could ask to do anything more than that? Your favourite word, how many more letters does it have than anti-disestablishmentarianism? One is the correct answer. <laughs> you can indulge in the flux in the hill of the anti-disestablishmentarianists if you want, but that might be showing off. <laughs> and we've now run out of time. <laughs> We'd have plenty of time, we haven't used such big words. That word plebs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, James and Hogg. I thought uh, for some reason that question might be directed at me. <laughs> um, but possibly something to do with my voice. Anyway. Uh, I think we need to have the right people for the job and we need to ensure that we have an education system that provides as good a system in the state as is got from private schools. I was at Eton and I was enormously lucky to be at a school that has fantastic facilities and fantastic teachers. I don't think you want to say just because people have been to Eton or similarly good public schools that they should be excluded from public service. I think that would be a mistake. But I think you do want to have a state-funded education system, and I think Michael Gove is doing this, that will ensure that the highest quality education is given to everybody in the country, and not just to those who go to the public schools. Do you ever call uh, anyone a pleb? Of course I don't, but uh, I, I, I think um, people in public life ought to show good manners to the electorate um, who put them there, and the police are part of that electorate. I, I am not in favour uh, of people um, being impolite to people who are serving them and their country. I think that is a mistake, and it's very good news that Andrew Mitchell apologised for it, which he was right to do. The sums that I have seen that they propose to uh, demand from this country seem to me to be extortionate, and I think to go whistle is, is an entirely appropriate expression. Boris Johnson is legally correct. There's a very good report by the uh, House of Lords European Scrutiny Committee which set out that if we leave um, without a deal, under EU, international and UK law, we own no money. And that's a very good starting point. So without a deal? Is without a deal, that's right. So then you're saying, what is it in our interest to pay to get certain other elements that we want? But their starting negotiation position, from the EU point of view, is they have no legal basis for demanding these payments. No, but they're saying that, they're is, saying, that is the gateway to getting a deal, and, uh, and you want a deal, uh, don't you? Saying, or would you like no they're deal? They're saying a moral obligation, but a moral obligation ranks mm. for less than a legal obligation. No, but they're obligation. also saying that's how we can part as friends. I mean, uh, what's um, your personal uh, view? Uh, I, I mean, I, we I, have I, entered into obligations, haven't we? Uh, the obligations cease on the day we leave the European Union. That's completely clear. 
Even um, for programmes which are continuing to If run. we want to maintain part of specific programmes, that's clearly different. The Erasmus programme, the Horizon 2020 programme, I have no difficulty with us continuing to contribute to those. There is then a negotiation on what Brexit looks like, and if money oils the wheels, we have it, they want it, but we should make sure we get a great deal in return for that.